Atiku Bokar has emerged as the presidential candidate of Nigeria's opposition PDP, but who are those he could face in that election? We look at the chances of his contenders this morning on The Breakfast. And the ruling All Progressives Congress has screened the presidential aspirants for its forthcoming presidential primary. We look at what transpired at the screening of the ruling party yesterday. And we have analysis uh, from today's headlines of the pages of today's national dailies and of the press. This and more ahead on The Breakfast this morning. Very good morning to you. Welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. I'm Kofi Patel. It's a beautiful Tuesday morning reaching you live from our studios on Victoria Island, Lagos. We have interesting conversations, but let's start off as usual with our trending segment on the program. And yesterday, uh, it was jubilation and celebration as three days after picking the membership card of the Labour Party, Peter B, former governor of a number of states and former presidential aspirant on the platform of the People's Democratic Party, merged as the presidential candidate of the Labour Party. Interesting scenes right there in Delta State where the presidential primary of the Labour Party held um, the contenders for that ticket uh, of the party stepped down. They all stepped down for Peter Obi, who rode triumphantly like Jesus Christ into Jerusalem. Uh, he rode triumphantly um, to pick the ticket of Labour Party. Let's go down to Delta State and to the venue of uh, the presidential primary of Labour Party. And let's listen uh, to what Peter Obese had to say after he was declared the presidential candidate of Labour Party. We need to rebuild here. We need to give the future generation a hope in this country. A country that is so endured with human and natural resources that have been mismanaged over the years needs a turn around. And that is the work we've just started. All right, indeed, um, there were scenes of jubilation and excitement there. You had the likes of uh, uh, Professor Pat Utomi stepping down for um, Dr. Peter B. And um, uh, most of the candidates had a thing, good things, actually. All the candidates um, or their aspirants for uh, the Labour Party ticket had good things to say uh, about uh, Peter B and why they were stepping aside for him to write triumphantly to pick that ticket and become the party's presidential candidate. Don't forget, uh, six days ago, uh, on the 25th of May, Peter B announced to his teaming supporters um, that he was resigning his membership of the People's Democratic Party. Uh, what are people saying about this? Some um, uh, have expressed uh, happiness that Peter B has finally clinched a presidential ticket and they're saying they're moving to the Labour Party. I can imagine that the Labour Party's uh, um, followership online, in particular on Twitter, where it seems a lot of the conversation is going on, uh, has increased and will continue increasing. In fact, they've given themselves a name, Peter B. FC. However, the presidential candidate now uh, of the Labour Party had to caution his supporters on Twitter yesterday to um, take it easy and to be, have some decorum in their conversations and in their campaigning for him on the social media application and on, on across social media sites. And um, uh, he said that it had come to his attention that some of his supporters had been uh, attacking and, uh, uh, you know, other candidates, and he didn't uh, like that. Uh, quite interesting. Um, the uh, the um, the presidential primary had a lot of intrigues and, um, you know, had a big media attention. It was a sort of a, a, a celebration of sorts because it was quite clear that this was going to happen at the end uh, of the day. Uh, you had some talk a, f a few weeks ago, about, about uh, three to four weeks ago, about a certain um, mega party being uh, created uh, to be the third force in Nigeria's election and that uh, Labour Party was touted as being the party of choice or the consensus party to fly the flag of this third force coalition in the 2023 elections. It remains to be seen how this will go. If that happens, that will be uh, quite... Um, it 
if that happens, that will be quite a, an interesting one and probably a stroke of genius as far as Peter Obi is concerned. However, some of the political parties uh, like uh, the New Nigeria People's Party uh, had come out to deny involvement in that uh, coalition or that third force mega party as it was called um, but it remains to be seen names like uh, that of Dr. Professor rather Pat Tommy um, uh, Atayu Jaga uh, you have the likes of um, Femi Falano and his own uh, movement were said to be part of this uh, uh, mega force or third force as it's called in Nigerian politics it remains to be seen whether Labour Party will be eventually adopted. Never say never as far as Nigerian politics is concerned. Never say never. Will the other parties adopt Labour Party? Will they come together to form a third force in Nigeria's politics? Um, what are the pros of the advantages for Peter B uh, on this on the ticket of this party? Well Labour Party is aligned or to the um, the labor movement in Nigeria. It's actually founded uh, on the labor movement in Nigeria and uh, you have the Nigeria Labour Congress um, having chapters all across the country, across the states in the country. Workers belong to the Nigeria Labour Congress. It is a workers, Nigeria's own version of the Workers' Party. And I'm sure that if this is able to, you know, if this is able to be, if this can be carried out successfully and uh, Labour is able to take on the responsibility of campaigning uh, for this party, then it might just be a good day for Peter B at the polls in 2023. And the man spared no effort, you know, on Twitter in, in telling uh, his supporters why he decided to join Labour Party. And uh, one of the reasons that he gave was that the party was a workers' party. It looks after the welfare of workers, the working class, and all that. So if that can happen, we see the Nigeria Labour Congress, even the Trade Union Congress, um, pulling its weight or putting its weight behind Peter Obi and behind this party, then it might turn out successfully for the gentleman. But some people have said that um, a vote for Peter Obi is a wasted vote. Some have also said that um, Labour Party does not have what it takes to give Peter Obi the ticket. They've talked about structure. I mean, the party has chapters in every state, uh, but some are saying this party won only uh, 5,074 votes in the 2019 general elections and asking, you know, why or how such a party should be relied on to, um, to challenge the APC that produced more than 15 million votes uh, for President Buhari in 2019, or the PDP that produced uh, uh, over 11 million votes for Atiku Abubakar in 2019. Now, the Labour Party's vote of 5,074 uh, amounted to 0.022% of the votes cast in the presidential elections in, 20, um, in 2019. 0.022% of votes cast in the presidential elections in 2019. That's quite minute. And I'm sure if you ask a lot of people, um, they will not remember who the candidates of Labour Party were in the 2019 general elections. And these are some of the things uh, people are pointing to. However, you have those who said that they are going to galvanize support, um, especially its Twitter base, you know, and that they believe that Peter Obi can do um, what some people are saying he cannot do, which is claim, claim to presidential ticket. And they've said if you have all the young people, if you have all the people on Twitter, you know, coming out offline, going into the streets, going into the communities, and uh, are canvassing for votes for Peter Obi, he just might have a field day at the end of the day. So let's see how it goes right there with Labour Party and uh, uh, Dr. Peter B. in the 2019 uh, general election. All right, uh, it's been quite a fallout from uh, the People's Democratic Party uh, presidential primary. Uh, of course, Atiku Bokar has since been elected um, the flag bearer of the PDP for the 2023 presidential election in Nigeria. Um, Atiku spent the next day, yesterday, uh, going around uh, meeting with some of his fellow contenders for that ticket 
in the Abuja residences. I mean, uh, if you're a politician, uh, ranking or leading politician in Nigeria these days, you should have an Abuja resident. Um, he met the likes of um, Yeso Mike, whose picture you can see there. Um, and uh, Wiki had to come out to say some things. But a major statement that was made by Yeso Mike uh, was a tweet he put out that he will support whoever emerges as uh, the candidate for the PDP. Indeed, that is Atiko Abubakar. He also, when he landed in Port Harcourt, uh, addressed his supporters, supporters of the People's Democratic Party in River State. And Yeso Mike, wow. You know, complaining about setting a, a gang up, you know, setting um, governors from the south who were unreliable and didn't keep to their word and all that, at the end of the day, said that he's a PDP man through and through, that he was going to keep to his promise he made or the promise he made at the presidential primary where he gave his speech. And in his speech, he said that he will support anyone who wins that primary election. So he reaffirmed that when he addressed his supporters uh, in Port Harcourt at a government house where he, um, where they, they had a meeting and he said that he was going to work for the PDP. He said that he was going to support Atiku Abubakar. And he also went on out to put a tweet uh, where he said that he will support Atiku Abubakar and work for the PDP um, in the 2023 presidential election. Now, uh, Wiki has always flaunted his credential as uh, being a true party man. Uh, he's uh, uh, spared no effort in telling the delegates as he uh, traversed the country to seek for their support that he remained uh, has been in the party in the PDP since it was founded in 1998. He has never gone anywhere. Like he always says, I know they go anywhere. Um, Atiko Broker himself has been to uh, the APC and back, uh, the likes of Buko Lasaki. I've also been to the APC and back, but Wiki has remained. So he is saying that he, in pledging his support for Atiku Abubakar, despite losing uh, that presidential primary to him, uh, is being a true party man like he has always been. And indeed, um, the reaction has been quite favorable uh, for Yen Somwike with supporters of Atiku Abubakar and supporters of the People's Democratic Party expressing their pleasure in the position that he has taken. Uh, Atiku spent time to also visit other contenders as well, trying to uh, unify the party. And one of his um, five agendas or five points agenda um, in his campaign has been unifying the country. And also, I'm sure that before you unify the country, you have to unify your party. And that is what it seems that Tiko Bukar is doing. All right, um, the wreckage of a missing plane was found out of foothills of Nepal's Himalayas, the Himalayan mountains, uh, yesterday, uh, yesterday uh, after it went missing the day before with 22 people on board. And uh, no one likes to hear a plane crash story. No one likes to hear a plane crash story. The Himalayas are quite a rough terrain. Um, that's where you have a, a range of some of the tallest mountains in the world. And um, it's quite a rough terrain, harsh terrain. And not a good place uh, for any mishap to happen. Well, the Nepali Army spokesman Narayan Silwal uh, said that the plane was found somewhere in Sanoswar, which is in the Mustang district, uh, Himalayan district, northwest of Kathmandu. Kathmandu happens to be the capital of Nepal. Uh, rescue team member told newsmen that the search uh, was looking, or the search team was looking at for possible survivors from the crash, but was not optimistic about finding 80 now. Um, the wreckage was found at an altitude of, guess what, around 4,000 meters. That's quite a lot. And uh, an international mountain guide by the name Narendra Shahi um, said the Nepal Army search and rescue team um, was currently at the crash site. It's quite, quite a sad one. The plane is a Tower Airlines plane which was flying uh, from Jomsom to Pokhara, which is a popular tourist hub uh, around 200 kilometers west of the capital, Kathmandu. And uh, we're told the plane had three crew members and 19 passengers on board when it lost contact with the uh, uh, air traffic control at about 9.55 a.m. or at about 4.10 GMT or 4.10 hours GMT on Sunday. Uh, there were four Indians, two Germans and 16 Nepali nationals on board. Very unfortunate one, 
very rocky and rough terrain where you have amongst the highest uh, uh, mountains in the world, the Himalayas. And we do hope and we do pray that um, uh, at some point they will find some survivors, uh, if possible, all of the uh, passengers alive. All right, that's the much we can take on the trending segment. When we come back, we look at the headlines of the pages of today's national dailies in Off the Press. Stay with us.